Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Milford, Connecticut, on this, the second Sunday in Lent. I invite you, in a moment of prayer, to receive this invitation. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Please join me as we say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The reading for today is from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning a promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. The second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his, with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the sin of ma Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So you have been with Jesus for a while now. You've watched as he has healed and taught, as he has exercised demons and fed thousands with bread and a little fish. And over and over again, you have been amazed. So when he asks you, who do you say that I am? You have the answer, you know right away. You are the Christ, no question about that. Please that you know the answer to the question on this unexpected pop quiz. You almost miss what Jesus says next. He predicts his future suffering, rejection, and death. Oh no, you say, sorry ma'am. You walk over to Jesus and put your arm around his shoulder and take him aside to straighten him out. Oh no, Jesus, suffering and rejection and death are not on the agenda here. We're after the throne of David. We're after the prestige and dominion that comes with ruling nations with power and might. We signed up for a crown not a cross. Jesus will have none of it. Get behind me. You are on the side of men, not on the side of God. You want to be on God's side. You have to walk with me on the way of suffering and death. What you think of as the way things should be is not the way of God. God's way, God's strength, comes through weakness and service, not power and dominion. With God, true life comes through suffering and death. How often over the years I have glibly answered Jesus' question to Peter exactly as Peter did and meant exactly what Peter meant. 
Don't we all want a strong God who heals, who leads the way to success and guarantees security, who ensures victory for our sports teams and for our political party while he's at it? In short, a God who keeps us healthy, wealthy, and wise. We speak of Jesus and our faith so casually, so effortlessly in church, as though we were different from Peter, because we know the end of the story of Jesus' time here on earth. We talk as if we know what we're talking about and actually get God. It's easy to think we've mastered the who do you say that I am question, but of course we haven't. I suspect in fact we only begin only begin to see how complex a question that is. We walk with Jesus blinded by our own prejudices and preconceptions, too, offering, too often assuming we know who needs to be healed and how, who has demons that need exercising, who needs to be fed with our bread and our fish. We pride ourselves too often on the good we do today and we don't see when it might be stained by the good we did not do yesterday. The cross we lift may be at the expense of others. It may be the result of an unjust system we inadvertently perpetuate. We are all embroiled in sin and brokenness not necessarily of our own making, but it's still what we're a part of, nevertheless. And what we have inherited is not the way of God that we were taught to believe was the way of God. And if you have any doubt about that, come join the discussion on racism at 9 o'clock on Sundays. We're reading the book, Waking Up White. It's really eye-opening. In the Lenten journey, if we're willing to go there, we are brought face to face with ourselves and with the human condition. The cross reveals the brokenness in our own lives and the corresponding brokenness in the world. It also discloses the God whose resurrecting power is always and already at work, bringing life out of death as God's new creation unfolds. We have been brought up to believe that life is something you go out and get or earn or buy or win. But as Jesus teaches and demonstrates, and as the cross shows us, it turns out life is more like love. It can't be earned or bought. It can only be given away, and it seems the more you give away, the more you have. Mercy and kindness, compassion and self-denial are the money in the bank of love. Many people have inspired me along the way of self-denial, but two in particular come to mind today. I have known S now for many years. He is, or was, a hugely successful businessman. One of those entrepreneurs who early on recognized the potential of the internet for financial gain. He saw a niche market for video production and worked with a small staff to create a product that would make big bucks in time. He worked increasingly long hours to reach his goal. He drove his coworkers. Dinner breaks became just that, brief breaks, bolted food and beer, more and more beer. His marriage began to disintegrate. Instead of taking time off for rest or play, he drank more to relax. Eventually, his small company was bought by one of the big three. He had realized his goal in life. 
financial security from now on. But it cost him his marriage, his health, and almost his life. When we met, S had just completed a six-month recovery program for his addiction to alcohol. He is open about how his life, or what he considered life at the time, fell apart. He discovered, he says, that the wisdom of the world heads only to a place of death. Finding Jesus and picking up his own alcoholic cross day after day, no matter how many times he failed, was his way to life. I realized success in the ways of the world, he said, and it left me empty and addicted, a drunk. I have discovered how wrong I was. I went back to church for the first time in many years. I listened to the words of scripture and heard them in new ways. I heard the preacher talk about his own brokenness and how he continues to be healed by Jesus. I joined the feeding program and taught Sunday school at church and discovered the caring for others restored me. The more I gave myself and my love away, the more I thought of others, then the more me, me, me got out of the way and I began to find fulfillment, just as Jesus promised. The cross where Jesus' life ends is where my life, where all of our lives begins. He died for me, for us, that I and those who follow me might truly live. Turn him on and S can't stop talking about how God has acted in his life and how filled with joy he is. I have been to the bottom and by God's grace, I am seeing the top. He'll tell anyone who is willing to listen. James grew up, as he described it to me, in a really tough part of New Haven. He had seen 18 of his friends murdered by the time he was 16. The only way of life he could see seemed to be by way of joining a gang. But after being slashed across the face with a knife in the hand of a kid who thought he was a friend, James began to despair. He could see nothing ahead but a life of violence, bloodshed, and killing. He dropped out of school and started hanging out, he says, on the New Haven Green. Drugs were available and cheap, and there were no guns or knives. I'm big and black, and white people were scared of me. It was easy to bum a buck or a cigarette off of almost anyone. It was a Tuesday when I asked a white dude for a cigarette. He gave me the cigarette and then didn't turn away but started a conversation with me. The conversation ended up lasting two hours. He wanted to know about my life. I went home with him that evening and ended up staying for dinner. His new friend said they were looking for help at the church where he belonged. Would I, would I, be interested in a job. Really? James marveled that this stranger could see something of worth in him and dared to take a chance. As James tell it, tells it, that was the beginning of his journey to a new life. I had no money. I had dropped out of school, but this man didn't judge me. He offered me a room of my own in his home until I could get on my feet. This was the first time I can ever remember being treated with respect. Where I come from, no one but gang members ever talked to black men like me. And gang members just swore and bullied and fought. John invited me into his home. He valued me. 
He took time to mentor me. He gave up space in his home, at his dinner table, and in his life for me. Once employed at the church, James went to every church service he could. He says, I came to understand myself not as black or bad, but as a child of God. He saw how Jesus accepted all people and how Jesus touched changed lives. Once, he says, I wanted a life of money and power, getting to the top by getting others out of my way, which meant shooting and violence, but no more. I am still learning about what a life of love and service instead of a life of fighting and brutality might look like. But I will continue. I want to live in the shadow of Jesus. James picked up his cross and like John who invited him into his home and took a chance on him, he decided to give his life for others. It's not all about me anymore. It's not even about my survival. It's about who can I help. James started and still runs an ever-growing weekly support meeting. It is by design unnamed, but it has become known as a place where anyone can come and be accepted as who they are, children of God where they too can learn the way of love, where they can learn that the way of violence only leads to more violence and death. It is love that leads to riches. I've seen it all, he says, and Jesus is the ground on which I stand. Rachel Held Evans, a popular theologian who died tragically at the age of 39, says in Searching for Sunday, God is in the business of bringing dead things back to life. If you want in on God's business, you better prepare to follow God to all the rock bottom, scorched earth's dead on arrival corners of the world including those in your own heart because that is where God is and be prepared because once you have been there your heart will never be the same Jesus was not about what the world around us counts as life he knew that Herod's come and Herod's go stars flame out and flame up Booze and guns only lead to death. True life with meaning and purpose is God's gift to those who call Jesus the Christ and are willing to live in self-denying service to God and neighbor. This Lent, this day, I pray that we may each be graced to have the eyes to see and ears to hear the dead corners in our own hearts and in the world around us. And as we pick up our crosses and turn our gaze to serving others, may self-denial lead us all to the new life, the true life that Christ has promised us all in his name. Amen.
And now, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. Bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ. You stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. I now invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, silent and aloud. For whom and for what do we pray? Loving God, this past week we commemorated the loss of 500,000 Americans due to the COVID-19 virus. We lament this loss in our nation. We lift up all those who mourn and grieve We give thanks for the healing work being done for those who are sick, for those who are giving out vaccines, but we lament this loss. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. In our prayers today, we also give thanks for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. For those celebrating birthdays, this week we offer this prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in your knowledge and love, and strengthen them and guide them all their days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We especially welcome the arrival of baby Jack Alexander, born to Ian and Elena Alexander, born this week. Welcome aboard, Jack. And congratulations to the Alexander family. We give thanks. For those celebrating anniversaries, we offer this prayer. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual covenant between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon all who celebrate their anniversaries this week, that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace, that your love may abide and abound, and that that love might remind all of us of your love for all your beloved children. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we continue to pray with those who offer prayers in the comments, we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, that in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this, your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, we may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Th thanks be to God. Amen.